There are many times in life when one might be thinking about connections. Okay, maybe not in most people's lives. But for the mathematician, oftentimes we look for ways to model the world around us to solve certain problems. Graphs, or networks, offer just that. A way to model the connections between objects, whether that be an airline route between two cities, a neural network, or even connections between friends. All of these connections, and more, can be studied within the context of the field of graph theory. Just so we know who to blame, the name graph was used by mathematician James Joseph Sylvester to describe a direct relationship between chemistry and mathematics. However, the first graph theory text was published in 1736 by, who else, Leonard Euler. Euler used what would become graph theory to solve the seven bridges of Konigsberg problem, the specifics of which we won't be getting into. To understand what a graph is telling us, we must first suffer through a few definitions. Generally speaking, a graph is a series of vertices and edges, denoted as G of VE. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges that are incident to that vertex. In other words, the degree of a vertex is just the number of edges that are touching that vertex. As an example, consider this graph. It has four vertices, in this case called A, B, C, and D, and four edges. If we wanted the degree of vertex A, we'd count the number of edges going to A. In this case, the degree of A is 3. A quick note, for the sake of simplicity, we're dealing with undirected graphs with no loops and no two vertices with multiple edges. For another example, let's take a simpler graph with three vertices, labeled A, B, and C. Let's make a table with three rows and three columns and label them A, B, and C to represent our graph. Now, here's how we can organize the data the graph gives us. Anywhere there's an edge between two vertices, we can put a 1 in the corresponding entry in the table. If they don't share an edge, we put a 0. As I said, we don't want any vertices to have more than one edge between them, and we don't want any vertex to share an edge with itself. Since no vertex is going to share an edge with itself, we can just fill in zeros along the diagonal of our table. Since there isn't an edge between A and B, we can fill in that zero. And in fact, we can also fill in the zero between B and A, since there isn't going to be an edge there. There isn't an edge between B and C, so we can fill in those zeros as well. Since there is an edge between A and C, we fill in those entries with 1. Someone fresh out of a linear algebra class might look at this table and want to put it into some sort of matrix. And indeed, if we do that, we get what's called the adjacency matrix for the graph. It turns out that doing linear algebra stuff to these adjacency matrices can describe a lot about how the graph behaves. Also, notice that the matrix is symmetric. That isn't a coincidence. In fact, every adjacency matrix for every graph that is set up with no loops or doubled edges will be symmetric. Just to recap this a little bit, this matrix has zeros corresponding to everywhere there isn't an edge, and ones everywhere there is. Now say we wanted to know the degrees of each of the vertices. We could look at the graph and count them, seeing that vertices A and C both have degree 1, while B has a degree of 0. However, if we're a bit clever, we could also glean this information from our adjacency matrix by summing up the rows. If we do this, going row by row, we're essentially counting up all of the edges incident to each vertex, which means the degrees of all of the vertices just kind of fall out naturally. If we take this degree vector, because what popped out is a vector, and use its entries as the diagonal entries of a new matrix, we get what is called a degree matrix. And it's these two matrices that can tell us exactly how a graph behaves. Looking at just the degree matrix, the trace of the matrix, or the sum of the elements along the main diagonal, turns out to be twice the number of edges in our graph. Think about what the degree matrix is telling us, or, if it helps, think of the individual degrees. As we saw earlier, the degree of a vertex is the number of edges incident to that vertex. And by the way we've constructed our graph, an edge is going to be connecting two vertices. So, Based on what it means to be an edge in this circumstance, if two vertices share an edge, or in other words are adjacent to one another, that edge will be included in both of the vertices' degree counts. 
So, by definition, we will be double counting. If we're given the degree matrix of a graph, or we get it from the adjacency matrix of the graph, and we want to know the number of edges in the graph, we just sum the diagonal of the degree matrix and then divide by 2. In this case, the number of edges in this graph is 1. In order to randomly generate one of these graphs, we can apply a Bernoulli distribution to a matrix and then apply a couple operations to get it into a form we like. But what is a Bernoulli distribution? Put simply, a Bernoulli distribution can be thought of as a model for any binary operation, where there is a probability of one of two things happening, like a coin flip, or like in our case, the probability of there being an edge between two vertices. So if we generate a random matrix with a Bernoulli distribution with probability one half, we get something that might look like this, which isn't in the form that we need yet. However, if we add that matrix to its transpose, we'll get a symmetric matrix. But this symmetric matrix will have a bunch of pesky twos everywhere. No worries. If we make the twos into zeros by taking the matrix mod two, we get a symmetric binary matrix that can be used to represent a graph, namely this one. So what did we learn? There are these things called graphs, or networks if you prefer, that can represent the connections between different things. We can then take these graphs and represent them as adjacency matrices. From there, we can glean a lot of information, such as the degrees of each vertex, or the number of edges in a graph. We also saw how we could generate adjacency matrices randomly. From there we can ask a whole slew of interesting questions, such as what is the expected number of edges of a random graph, what is the distribution of those edge counts, what is the distribution of the eigenvalues of an adjacency matrix, what the heck is a Laplacian matrix, and how would we go about determining if a graph was connected? All of these are interesting questions that could be the subject of hours of lectures. This video was meant as a brief introduction to the subject of graph theory, and in particular, how some linear algebra concepts could be applied to the field. Hopefully this piqued the curiosity of those who wish to delve deeper into the topic. Thanks for watching.